I'm Constance Carter, head of the Science and Technology Division of the Library of Congress. And today we're here in the Pickford Theater of the Library of Congress's Madison Building. On this side of the table, we have the correspondence of Charles Darwin. He was born in uh, 1809 and died in 1882. And here we have the first 16 volumes of his correspondence. Uh, going up to 1868. We expect the volumes to, to um, end at probably 36. And I have some selected um, correspondence, such as this uh, 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 Charles Darwin's letters edited by Fred Burkhart, who is the editor of all the correspondence. I like this particular volume because it's dedicated to me here inscribed to me and it says for Connie for whom so many of us thank God and my brother who thinks I'm lower than dirt uh, saw this and has treated me like a queen ever since and um, here we have a piece from 1873 when I worked on the correspondence, most of the time I was looking for letters to editors, uh, biographical materials, and one day they asked me to find um, if there was a poem written by the crew. They didn't know what the name of the crew was, but it was one, uh, a poem that had been written for the 1873 Mardi Gras, which was um, the theme of which was Darwin's missing link. And uh, so I found, by putting in Crew and Darwin into the computer, the missing link to Darwin's origin of the species. And it is beautifully illustrated in a 47-page poem. Where does this book come from? This book came from the general stacks of the Library of Congress but it was published presumably in um, Louisiana because that's where it was uh, printed. And we have some other books. Um, today we're having a talk by Sandra Herbert and here is her award-winning book, uh, Charles Darwin, Geologist. She was looking for the origin of the origin of species and found that before 1859, all of his papers and books had been written in whole or in part about geology. So she went to England and had a great time looking at de in depth at Darwin's manuscripts and his little uh, red notebook here as well as his other notebooks. And that's where she found the genesis of the origin on which she's going to speak today. I see that red notebook there was edited by Sandra Herbert? Yes. The story of that book. Well, this is the book that she found at Down Cottage, or Down House, where in Kent, where Darwin lived. And she was granted access as a graduate student at Brandeis, uh, and a serious Darwin scholar. This is uh, Charles Darwin's uh, uh, Beagle Diary, and these are original Charles Darwin uh, of his journal of researches of uh, the countries he visited during the voyage of the Beagle. And over here, we have the eight volumes of um, Darwin's, the Diary of the Beagle, the Journal of the Beagle, Zoology of the Beagle, the Geology of the Beagle. Here is da a picture of Down House. Um, and here is the study in which uh, Darwin wrote. And these are some of the stories of the people who lived at Don, uh, um, Down House. And Charles Darwin wrote a uh, life of Erasmus Darwin, his grandfather, and we have a book that uh, Erasmus Darwin sent to Benjamin um, Franklin in the rare book room of the Library of Congress. And this is Darwin, his daughter, and we have uh, two books 
written by his grandchildren. This um, period piece, a Cambridge period piece, a Cambridge childhood, written by um, his granddaughter. And then this uh, blue book here, The World That Fred Made, an autobiography written by the grandson whose mother died at birth and he spent most of his time growing up with Charles Darwin and Emma, the, his wife. And here we have the two volume correspondence of Emma Darwin, his, his wife, a century of family uh, letters. Seems like uh, Charles Darwin did a lot of writing. Yes, he did. He certainly did. As I said, it's going to take 36 volumes just to uh, complete his correspondence. When, when, how long has that project been underway? It's been underway for at least 20 years, and it's expected to go another 20, 25 years. And it is available online. The correspondence uh, is, and uh, you can find the website from the library's press release. Uh, in general, these books, where, where, where do they come from? These aren't any first editions or anything like that? No, these are books that uh, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea could uh, call for in any of the reading rooms of the Library of Congress. These are all books in the library's general collections. The first editions will be in the rare book room. Somebody doesn't know much about Darwin and they want to start. Where do you recommend they begin? Well, they might want to begin with one of the magazine articles that has recently, um, his birthday has spawned Nature, Scientific American Science. And you can see here we have uh, books for the younger reader because a lot of younger readers are collectors as Darwin was. And here are the rest of Darwin's complete, uh, complete works. But there are a number of good biographies of Darwin, and one of the best is Janet, uh, Janet Brown, who is at Cornell. Her two-volume work, uh, Charles Darwin Voyaging, and Charles Darwin, The Power of Place. How did you get interested in this? Um, my first job was in Trinidad with William Beebe, uh, who was the first man to go down under the ocean in a bathysphere. And he was a collector, and uh, he loved A.A. A. Milne and Charles Darwin. And so when I came to the Library of Congress um, and found its wide collections and became a friend uh, with uh, Sandra Herbert, the author, and was asked to do a, uh, a lot with, by the editor of the correspondence. Um, and as I did research for the correspondence of Charles Darwin, I became very interested. It was great fun to find bits and pieces that they had not been able to find before. So it was all the joy of the hunt uh, increased my knowledge and my love of Charles Darwin. Abraham Lincoln, Charles Darwin, born on the same day. Do you think that uh, Lincoln has overshadowed Darwin a bit? Well, Sandra Herbert just gave a talk on Darwin in the shadow of Lincoln. And perhaps here in America, um, at least at this point in time, uh, Lincoln may have overshadowed. But I think in the long run, um, it will be Darwin that uh, we will remember the longest. And then finally, if people want to learn about uh, what they can about Darwin from the Library of Congress, where, where should they go? They can come to the Science Reading Room, and um, we have some books on Darwin right in the Reading Room, or they can use the online card catalog of the Library of Congress and put in Darwin, Charles, and find all the books in the library's collections on Darwin. Is that loc.gov? Yes, it is. www.loc.gov.